Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the image to deep node. So we're going to start talking about our deep pixel nodes within Fusion uh, 20. And unfortunately, these are studio only. But like I always say, another good reason to go out and purchase that studio version of DaVinci Resolve. It's well worth the money. So before we jump into Fusion, I'm going to jump into Blender so I can kind of explain some of this deep pixel stuff because any of the deep pixel nodes require file types with deep pixel data. And in the 3D world, when we talk deep pixel data, if we look at all these little blades of grass, when we render them out, it's rendering as pixels. But each pixel, depending on how we set up our file export, is gonna have what's called deep pixel data, meaning it's gonna know the Z depth, gonna know the uh, location, a whole bunch of other information. So that's going to be available in your open EXR file. So to get this data pushed to your open EXR file in Blender and in any other 3D program you're using, when you're exporting your file, you want to make sure you check additional passes. So you have this additional data. See, it says data. So it's actually pushing data. So for this example, we just have our combined, obviously our Z pass, and I'm going to check our position our normal and our vector, just so I have all that data. We may or may not be using all this data, but this is data you pretty much want on all your OpenEXR exports so you can use that data with Infusion. Now, the other thing that does matter is how you export this. So right now, this is just an OpenEXR single file, but when we export this with Infusion, it's not going to bring in all that additional data. So in order to have all that additional data, we want to make sure we select open EXR multi-layer. That way, all that additional data is on its own little layer. And however you set it up, whether it's zip float, that's all up to you. So the key things are to make sure it's open EXR multi-layer and to make sure you have those data layers selected. And once you render your animation, you'll have the files you need. So let's jump into Fusion. And once we're in Fusion, there's a few things we're going to need so we can uh, see these notes. So let's get rid of that. And the first thing we're going to bring in is we're going to bring in a 3D merge just so we have 3D. We're going to bring in a camera. And we're going to bring in a render node. So we'll go ahead and connect these. And under render node, I'm just going to uh, go to hardware render and leave it on output type image. And if you notice on our render node now, we now have this deep image selection. If we want to keep pushing deep image data past our render node, we would select this. If we just want that 2D information to see the visual of everything going on, we'd uh, make sure we leave it on image. And uh, let's go ahead and do our lighting and shadows. And let's go ahead and add a loader node and I'm going to bring in first our single layer of our regular OpenEXR. I'm going to bring that one in. And let me go ahead and add a gamut. And switch this to sRGB since ACES won't look too good. So this is our little uh, grass that we rendered out in single format. Now, if I look at our channels, I right click and I select our channels. You can see we only have color, red, green, blue, and alpha. And if I go to our open EXR and go to our format and look at our channels, you can see we have no Z channel. So that's why I said it's important to make sure you do that multi-layer EXR because we don't have the channels we need for that deep pixel data to push along. So let's go ahead and copy these. But instead on this one, we're going to load the multi-layer file. And if I go to our format, you can see we have our combined under our Z, we can select our depth channel, no Z back, no coverage, no object ID. Under our normals, I'm gonna bring in our X normal, our Y normal, in our Z normal and under our positions, I'm going to select our X, 
our Y and our Z. And if I look at our multi-layer node and I go to our channels, you can see we now have our depth, we have our normals, and we have our positions. So we have all that nice juicy data coming from those pixels within that image. So to be able to see this, our node today is the image to deep, which is the first main image we need for deep pixel data. So I'm gonna bring in a image to deep and I'm gonna add it. And first I'm gonna show you what happens with uh, this single layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that into our image to deep. And to be able to see this, I know I'm not covering this today, but we need a deep to points to actually change this to points. So I'm gonna connect our image to deep to our deep to points input. If I look at our deep to points, you can now see we see that layer of grass right there. But if you notice, it's a single layer. But it's a good way to show you what this image to deep node does in its options. So on the image to deep node, you only have a few options to offset and scale your Z. So if you want to specify your Z, you can just specify it and it's going to use any specific Z channels you bring in, but we can still offset it right here. And we can change the center. And if we uncheck our specify Z, we can change the Z scale, but you're really not going to see anything because there's no Z information coming in but it'll still allow us to offset on the Z and change the center of the Z. And really, other than what's going on under the hood, this is all you can do with the image to deep. But what the image to deep node is doing is it's gathering all that data and bringing it into this node to be able to push along to this node. But if we have all that data already in data format from our OpenEXR, Technically, we don't need this node, and I'll show you that here in a second. But we can use this image to deep node to input other images. So if I wanted to bring any other type of footage, I could uh, just grab some footage, input it to our image to deep, and now we've got our footage in deep pixel environment. So we can do whatever we want with this uh, image. And we'll get to it in the deep to points when we cover this, but uh, we can change the density so it's uh, more dense or less dense. But let's go ahead and disconnect this. And now we're gonna connect our deep pixel multi-layer uh, EXR. And we're getting the same result but you can see there's a little bend to it because it is picking up some of that Z depth information. But in order for all this uh, little image to deep or deep pixel ecosystem to work correctly, we need a camera. So we're gonna input our camera into our deep points. And now you can see our grass is spread correctly in our little 3D environment. And let's go ahead and connect this up to our uh, render. And right now we're not seeing anything because everything is backwards. So if we go to our, uh, our merge node, you can see our camera is pointing this way and our Z information is this way. And that's just because our Z info is backwards and it's going to change depending on what program you bring it into. Some programs may bring it in correctly. Blender will bring it in backwards. But if we uh, add a D transform or a deep transform, we can stick that in and our D transform will just uh, make our scale negative one. It'll flip it around correctly. If we go to our render node and uh, make our deep pixel information renderable, now we can see it. And we can go to this and uh, change the size so we can start seeing our grass come in. So that is the image to deep node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.